Behind the scenes, housing market data media won't show you. Many people are frustrated and saying that home prices aren't dropping and people are making more money than ever. So let's dive right into it. Wages. There's a buzz in the air about home prices stabilizing and people making more money than ever. Now, let's examine the hard facts and data because actually, back in 2000, the average median income clocked in at $66,248. Fast forward to 2021 and the average household income was reported at $70,784. No need for a calculator, that's only about 6.9% wage growth over two decades. Hold on to your seats because here's where it gets interesting. The Federal Reserve may have stopped reporting annual income figures, but with a bit of digging, I unearthed an estimate for June 2023, pegging the U.S. household income at around $81,840. Crunching the numbers from 2000 to now, we're looking at a 23.6% annual household income surge over 23 years. Some argue that it's actually been a 33% wage growth over the same period. But even at best, that's only a modest 1.4% annual wage increase since 2000. Meanwhile, housing costs have skyrocketed by almost 160% in just 23 years, and inflation is dancing between 10-20% to depending on your shopping list. It's a wild ride, and one thing's for sure, everything seems to be outpacing wage growth. Stay tuned as we dissect the numbers and uncover the real story not in the headlines. Before I get into the juicy details, please take two seconds to help me and hit the like and subscribe if you're enjoying the video. Each like and subscribe is fuel for the algorithm that helps support this channel. Thank you. Now, back to what I was saying. Taking a look at the average household income, let's review this Federal Reserve chart that displays the real average household income by state. This chart gives us insight into the income trends across the country, providing valuable information that can broaden our understanding of the issues. It's important to note that the information on this chart is from 2021, which means it's a considerable time frame and reflects the impact of more than two decades worth of policy decisions and economic shifts. As we review the chart, we see that in the District of Columbia, the average household income in 2021 was $90,640. When we look at the income distribution in the United States, it's no surprise that two of the most prosperous areas fall within the borders of Washington, D.C. and Maryland. While the reasons for this may vary, it's logical to assume that the prevalence of federal or government employees in D.C. certainly plays a role. In Maryland, the insurance sector is one of the biggest industries driving economic growth, which offers ample employment opportunities and can further contribute to the state's financial success. Certain sectors are faring better than others. Over the last 23 years, housing prices have increased by 160% in various regions nationwide. This significant increase in housing costs is matched by the reality that inflation rates are hovering around 10 to 20%, depending on the product people purchase. Despite the overall growth in the economy over the last several years, wages have remained stagnant. The cost of living is rising much faster than people's earning potential, creating a situation where Americans struggle to pay their bills and maintain a basic standard of living. This disparity between wage growth and the overall cost of living is a major issue that needs to be addressed to ensure that all Americans can live prosperous and fulfilling lives. Inflation. To understand this better, we'll examine a chart provided by Federal Reserve Economic Data. This chart looks at the inflation rate from 2020 to 2022. Interestingly, we can see a clear difference when we compare this with data from as far back as 1964. The inflation line has been largely stable except for several severe economic downturns in 1974 and 1980. This means that the current inflation rate is something worth paying attention to as inflation has drastically increased. It is not a normal fluctuation, but a change occurring in an otherwise stable economic climate. We need to keep an eye on these inflation rates and understand what factors are contributing to them. One possibility is that the increase in inflation results from the pandemic, which has caused significant disruptions in the global supply chain, leading to high prices for goods and services. We also see increased demand as economies reopen and people resume regular spending. Debt 
The debt market is experiencing a drain, and banks must step in to fill the gap. However, there's a concern that banks may not have the necessary resources to do so. As a result, the federal government is taking actions required to ensure the functioning of the financial system by investing trillions of dollars into a reserve for the banks to borrow from at par. Since we have already witnessed bank collapses earlier this year, the issue of bank bailouts and potential defaults in the debt market is again gaining attention. Adding to this concern is the recent report by the New York Federal Reserve. According to the report, Americans are currently in debt by a staggering $17.05 trillion, with home mortgages accounting for 71% of the debt. You'll find that home equity lines of credit make up 2% of the total debt. As for auto loans, they account for about 9%, while credit card debt makes up 6%. But the real shocker is the trillion-dollar student loan debt, constituting a major chunk, comprising 9% of the total pie. Notably, those who took out student loans in 2020 haven't yet paid the interest or principal balances. That's about to change as payments with interest will start to resume in September, and the first payment is due on October 1st, marking the first payment since 2020. Other types of debt account for the remaining 3%, but it's clear that student loan debt is a pressing and widespread issue. What's more worrying is the increasing delinquency rates in the first quarter of 2023, meaning that people are beginning to fall behind by 30 days or more on their auto loans, credit card payments, and mortgages. Seeing that the older demographic is shouldering an increasingly heavier load is alarming. This is especially evident when considering the 70-plus age group represented by the top gray line on the chart. Moreover, the 60-69 to 69 age range isn't far behind in terms of debt increase, followed closely by the 50-59, to 40-49, to 49, and 30-39 to 39 age groups. The only age group where we see a slight reduction in year-over-year -year debt is between 18 to 29 years old. Remote Work Recently, many companies have been gravitating towards a more flexible hybrid work model. This model allows employees to have some leeway regarding where and how they work, but also requires them to be physically present in the office for a few days each week. According to an online article from tech.co, some major corporations have already completely phased out remote working as of 2023. These corporations include Dell, Disney, Amazon, Starbucks, Walmart, General Motors, UPS, and Meta. Instead, they have mandated that their employees show up in person at the office for at least two days a week. This sudden shift in policy has caught many employees off guard. In fact, Tens of thousands had recently moved to houses located an hour or more away from their workplace to enjoy more remote flexibility. Unfortunately, these employees may now be at risk of losing their jobs unless they choose to fly to work two days a week, which, don't laugh, some people are actually doing. Did you hear about the latest research findings published by Stanford University? The study recently featured in the New York Times surveyed over 10,000 workers from various cities and industries. The researchers found that 27% of paid full-time days involved working remotely from home. Interestingly, this study also revealed that much of this remote work in 2023 stemmed from hybrid setups. This means that employees could split their work week between working from home and in person at a physical office. The survey showed that a significant percentage of workers, 28%, opted for this hybrid work arrangement. On the other hand, about 60% of workers were fully in person and only 12% were fully remote. These findings shed light on our modern workforce's growing remote work trend. With technological advancements and the changing work culture, more and more companies offer remote work options to their employees. Insurance rates. The insurance industry has seen a significant rate surge, which is alarming for policymakers. We expect an exorbitant 25 to 40 percent hike in insurance premiums next year across all policies from homeowners to business. The root cause for such a steep rise in rates has been the excessive gouging by roofers on the residential side, especially in states that regularly experience bad weather conditions, such as hail damage. Since roof replacements were covered under homeowners insurance policies, it led to an undue burden on insurance companies. One of the significant changes that the insurance industry has implemented is the revision of policies with regard to coverage of old roofs. 
Most insurance companies now only cover the cost of materials provided the roof is over 20 years old and some damages require a claim. This revision has been significant since it prevents policyholders from submitting unreasonable claims for damages to their insurance company. The increase in insurance rates can be attributed to many factors and the escalation in costs of repairing or replacing roofs is one of them. Policyholders must be aware of this information and make necessary changes to their insurance policies. They may consider looking into plans that provide better coverage and an affordable premium to ensure financial stability in times of need. It's no secret that rent prices have increased for the past few years. However, we are now starting to witness a positive shift in the rental market all across the nation. The Federal Reserve has recently acknowledged the need for shelter inflation to be corrected, which is a great sign for renters struggling to pay their monthly housing costs. To back this up, recent data shows that rent prices have declined in several major cities. This is due to a combination of factors, such as increased housing supply and a decrease in demand, which has led to landlords being more competitive and willing to lower their prices. The government has recognized the need for intervention to reduce landlords' profits and provide relief to renters. With such measures put in place, it is predicted that owning rental properties may no longer be a profitable venture. 2023 has brought numerous changes and challenges to our lives. From increasing delinquency rates to a shift towards hybrid work models and rising insurance rates, it is evident that we are living in a constantly evolving world. However, with these changes also come opportunities for growth and adaptation. As we navigate through these uncertain times, staying informed and open to change is crucial to thrive in the years ahead. Thanks for watching and please make sure you subscribe. If you enjoyed the video, leave a comment below letting me know what you have seen regarding home prices and wages in your market.